One of the questions I often ask audiences when I give talks is what's the purpose of a PhD? Now, I get a lot of different answers, but one that comes up quite often is that the goal of a PhD is to become an independent researcher. Now, there is an element of truth to this in that you should be able to come up with your own ideas and make decisions about your research, and those abilities should improve over time. But sometimes this idea of being an independent researcher is taken to mean that you have to do everything on your own with no guidance at all. And sometimes it's used as an excuse by supervisors to neglect their responsibility to support their students. But let's think about this idea of independence from different perspective. If the goal is to become an independent researcher, why do academics join research groups? Why do they have meetings and go to conferences? Why do they co-author papers? Why even do universities exist? If academics are supposed to be independent, why aren't they all just working from home and publishing their work through blogs? It's because people do better work when they can freely exchange and debate ideas, when they can collaborate with people with different expertise, when they can get feedback, or even when they can have arguments with people who fiercely disagree with them. There is no such thing as an independent researcher in academia. Yes, there have been people like Einstein, who did some of his most important work while working in a patent office, but he was in constant conversation and correspondence with other scientists, and ultimately it was only through engagement with other academics that his work became known. In my own PhD, I was quite lucky in that I was part of a very sociable research group, so we'd see each other every day, and there were always wide-ranging discussions, whether part of formal group meetings or just over coffee. And as a result, I learned about things that I never would have found through just reading the literature on my own research topic. Also, talking about my research regularly was like practice for writing, as it's much easier to write about topics that you've spoken about before. And finally, I could get help when I needed it, both from my supervisor, who, despite being extremely overworked, was always available and supportive, and from other students and postdocs. I could not have done the work that I did, and I would not have gained the knowledge that I did had I tried to do it all on my own. It simply would not have been possible. Of course, there were times when I was working alone, or when I needed to work alone without being distracted, and I wasn't relying on other people to help me with everything, but I was regularly reconnecting with people and getting feedback on my work and my ideas. So, as I said, I was lucky to have this kind of environment, but not all PhD students are so fortunate. There are those studying remotely, which makes it much harder to have regular contact with other researchers, and there are those working in departments where this kind of interaction either doesn't happen naturally, or in some extreme cases is actively discouraged. There are, unfortunately, some supervisors who will tell you not to contact them until you have a complete draft. But this is not okay. They have a duty to provide guidance, and they have a share in the responsibility for your success. It makes me pretty angry when I hear these kind of stories, because it causes so much harm to people who invest so much in a PhD, whether that's financially or emotionally, and who place so much trust in their supervisors. I think there's no point in being part of a research group if there's no contact between its members. And there's no point paying tuition for a supervisor who just acts as a barrier instead of giving you support and guidance and men mentorship. All researchers are interdependent, and you should not be expected to do everything on your own. If you want to do the best work you can, you need other people. But it's not just about doing the best work. In my previous video, I talked about the importance of your inner state 
and how it affects everything that you do. Well, the quality of your connections with other people has a massive effect on both your physical and emotional well-being. Isolation really isn't good for us. And it's important to have people that you trust who you can talk to, especially when things are stressful. Again, this can be difficult. It can be hard to admit you're struggling and it can be scary to reach out to people. And when you do, some might not understand what you're going through or they might not know how best to help you. And when I was having a hard time in my PhD, some people trying to be supportive would say, it's okay, everybody goes through this, you just have to keep going and don't give up. But that really didn't help because I didn't need someone to make me feel better. I, need so I needed someone first and foremost to just listen and recognize what I was going through. But even though some people didn't know how to help, I did find friends that I could lean on for that kind of support. And I also got help from the university counseling service. So this helped me enormously, but I did leave it quite late. And I was, again, very lucky in that I sought help, or was forced really to seek help when there was still time to turn things around. With hindsight, of course, it would have been better to seek help earlier and it would have been a lot better to have a solid support network as a foundation going into the PhD instead of seeking it as an emergency measure. But I think subconsciously, I'd taken on this belief that I had to do it alone and that seeking help was somehow a sign of weakness. So I think we need to let go of this idea of independence as an ideal and instead think about interdependence. You don't have to figure out everything yourself. And that applies whether we're talking about the technical side of the work or just the emotional burdens of being a PhD student or just life in general. We are interdependent and we need each other. So I will leave you with that thought. If you'd like to know when I release new videos, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And also head over to my website at phd.academy and sign up for the email list. And if you have any thoughts or questions or requests for topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment below. So that's all from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.